Hello everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Itai Shakuri, I'm with the open source team of Aqua Security and today I wanted to talk to you about Managed Fields, which is a new edition in Kubernetes 118 that some of you have probably noticed once you've upgraded that you have this big chunk of YAML in your stuff, in your uh, resources that uh, a lot of people I've heard that are uh, confused about it and I want to make this video to explain to explain what it is about why it is there and a little bit about the, the motivation that has led to uh, adding it into Kubernetes so to start we first need to discuss kubectl apply which is something that I'm sure that you uh, worked with that you are familiar with. This is a very nice Kubernetes features the feature that allows us to capture the desired state of uh, one or many different resources in in files in directories and then run kubectl apply and point to this directory or files and kubectl will just make sure that the state of the cluster will match the state as described in these files. Now let's consider the following use case. We have this we have this deployment that we applied. So now the state of the cluster is uh, exactly as in this file, which means that it is two. But then we also have an HPA, a horizontal pod autoscaler, which is a component that wants to scale our deployment. In other, one, in, in other words, it wants to change the replicas count from 2, for example, to 10. Now what happened is that the state, the, the actual state of the resource no longer matches the state that we know of and what we have in our files. So let's continue. Now the user wants to update and add this field, for example, hello world. It go, they, they go to the, to the file that they have on disk, they edit the file and they add this field, but the file also included the, the previous state that the user was aware of, which is replicas2. And what will happen in this case is that hello world will uh, indeed be added to the, to the resource, but also replicas will be overridden by this state and uh, HPA will quickly recover and scale it back to 10 but this is not this is not a desired uh, scenario so everyone who's worked with HPA for example knows the fix you just need to omit replicas from the original document that you author from the original Yammer that you initially submit to Kubernetes and uh, if you do that the replicas, uh, the replicas will be default to 1 and then HPA will be able to update it into 10 and later when you go and reapply something and you edit the file, the file didn't include replicas so uh, when you reapply it you just don't touch replicas at all Kubernetes will know to just add hello world here and it will know to just ignore whatever is in in replicas and uh, before we move on to managed fields I just want to explain how this works because it's important for the understanding um, in the first example when we did specify replicas kubectl apply uh, took the state of the resource and it encoded it into a JSON string and it attached it to the resource uh, basically persisted the state at the time of creation. This is called the last applied configuration. This is uh, kept on your resources as an annotation. You, you must have seen it uh, if, you, if you did a kubectl apply sometime. And uh, the reason it's there is uh, to help us resolve conflicts. So let's take this example, for example. We we um, we now made a change and we're reapplying 
So now the desired state says replicas 2, but the current state says replicas 10, because HPA said so. What do we do? This is a conflict. So what do we do? Uh, we consult the last apply configuration file and we see that when the user created the resource, they said something about replicas. They said that it should be two. So it means that the user is aware of this field and that they probably know what they are doing. The key and the value match, so th they probably know what they're doing. So we understand and uh, uh, the, the action that we chose to do here is to override, to allow the user to override this field. In technical terms, what's happening here is that we are doing a three-way merge between the desired state, the live state, and the last applied configuration, which is used as the, the base state. Um, and in the second example, where we didn't create the resource with a replicas count, the actual state included replicas even though we didn't specify it, but the last applied configuration did not. And this is the important uh, fact here. And when we, when we go ahead and reapply, we see that the desired state has no replicas. The actual state has replicas 10. What do we do? Do we delete replicas? Maybe the user wanted to delete, to delete replicas, so they removed it from their YAML. If we only had these two files, we wouldn't have known what to do. So we consult the last applied configuration. We see that the user did not say anything about replicas at all. And what we understand from that is that the user uh, does not want to manage this field. They are not, maybe they are not even aware of this field. So, um, so we don't touch it. This is what the action that uh, will be chosen in this case. So it's important to understand uh, that last applied configuration is a critical part of how kubectl apply works. It basically describes the user the user's intention. And uh, right now we have only one user, which is kubectl, which is um, uh, basically representing the, the real user, you and me. All right, kubectl is the user in this case. But uh, we are, we, we've already seen that there is uh, another user here. Maybe it's not a human user, but it's, it's an actor in the system. This is the HPA. We also have many other actors in the system. There are a lot of controllers, such as HPA, that are interacting with your resources. And uh, this is how Kubernetes is built. Um, so there are a lot of actors. And uh, this entire story takes an interesting turn when the Kubernetes authors wanted to move kubectl apply from the client side, from kubectl, to the server side, to kube API. I mean, it makes sense because it's a, it's a useful feature. Um, there is a lot of uh, smarts in there and uh, it's very easy to do and apply as opposed to other operations. <coughs> so uh, today it is locked only to kubectl users. Um, you have to use kubectl. What if you're using another tool, another, I don't know, a dashboard? Maybe you are um, using another language. Maybe you are writing an operator or a controller such, such as the HPA and you want to use something as convenient as kubectl apply. Before that, you couldn't have because this was a client-side feature and with the server-side apply, maybe you can. So um, the, the original um, um, work started a long time ago, like uh, more than two years, 
but server-side apply has made a few uh, iterations and is currently in beta this is why we are seeing it more visible in cube 118 so we want to move kubectl apply to the server and we've discussed the need to support multiple actors and we also know that last applied configuration is a critical component to how kubectl apply works so how would we move kubectl to the server side do we now support last applied configuration uh, for every actor do we need to persist all the last applied configurations all the point of views all the intentions that all the different actors in the systems um, has so this was actually uh, maybe the the, the, the original uh, intention this is a google doc that I found that describes uh, the, maybe the, the prototype for this feature that suggested something along these lines but the solutions that we ended up with is uh, something else it is, uh, it is different because we are no longer capturing the user's intention in the, in the form of less apply configuration instead of that we are keeping track of field ownership in an explicit way using a new field which is manage fields you guessed it right so if you are using cube 118 and server side apply you will not you, you will not see less applied configuration anymore instead you will see this manage fields uh, field anywhere um, and the contents of this field is helping kubectl apply do its work do its job so this is the same example as i uh, shown before but now it's using cube 118 and server side apply as you can see the this actor the kubectl apply which represents the user is now owning basically everything under spec okay this was expected because this 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 is the stuff that was in the yaml that we submitted so yes we own this and we can also see that uh, cube controller manager this is the name uh, the collective name for all of the controllers the built-in controllers in kubernetes so this this one is owning everything under status which also makes sense because we never the user never touches status we just read from it someone else made sure to update it now we know this is cube controller manager and after i um, simulated something like an hpa touching the replicas field i also got this uh, edition which says itisk this is the name that i gave my controller itisk is now managing spec.replicas so only the replicas field is being owned by itisk and now we can use this information kubectl apply can use this information to um, to uh, do a better conflict resolution and give us better user experience when we are working with resources in kubernetes so now we know now we know what these managed fields uh, new field is all about it's about supporting the move of kubectl apply from the client to the server and supporting multiple actors and explicitly uh, tracking field ownership in our resource in a future video I uh, also plan to discuss the schema for this field and the object model and, uh, and um, maybe how you can use it for your benefit so uh, wait for the next video uh, but for now this is it thank you i hope this was interesting to you and if it was please subscribe to our channel see you next time bye